What will the technology of the future look like? That's a difficult question to answer, but the technologies that we'll rely on years from now are already in development today. To find them, all you need to do is cast your eyes over the many prototypes and trials that are being carried out all over the world, which is precisely what we're doing in this video. In October 2022, an all-electric passenger plane took to the skies above Washington State, USA, with nine passengers aboard. It took off and landed successfully, thus laying new foundations for the passenger planes of the future. The plane is called Alice and comes from an aerial engineering company called Eviation. It's powered by a pair of Magni 650 electronic propulsion units and can reach speeds of up to 298 miles per hour without producing a single carbon emission. As an added bonus, Alice's lack of jet engines means that the plane doesn't produce as much noise as a regular passenger jet would either. There are still hurdles to overcome, though. Alice's October test flight only took it to 3,500 feet, which is about a tenth of the height reached by a commercial flight. Still, though, Eviation says that the data harvested from the trial will allow it to push forward to new heights, literally, in future tests. Flights are often cited as one of the world's biggest causes of pollution, but trials like this one show that it needn't be the case. We all know that self-driving cars are coming. It's just a question of who gets to the marketplace first with a genuinely successful model. There's a strong chance of that being Waymo, which applied to the state of California for permission to introduce driverless electronic taxis in December 2022. Waymo began life as a Google company. The first prototype Waymo, which was shaped like a pod, took to the road in late 2015. It had no steering wheel, no pedals, and no human aboard to correct things if they went wrong. Nevertheless, it found its way around the roads of Austin, Texas with no incidents. Between 2015 and the end of 2022, Waymo cars drove another 2 million miles of test routes in preparation for a launch to the general public. The company has recently decided to back out of the trucking market, but it's interested in logistics, ride-sharing, and personal-use vehicles. Given the potential of Waymo and the variety of things it could clearly be used for, it's a little surprising that Google decided to part with the brand. Just as self-driving cars have been in development forever, so have flying cars. The idea of a commercially successful flying car might be a little more fanciful than the idea of a successful self-driving car. But check out the KleinVision Air Car. In early 2022, it was granted a certification of airworthiness in Slovakia. You don't need us to tell you that Slovakia is not the world, but Slovakia is a modern European nation. If authorities there are happy to certify the air car, there's no reason authorities in the rest of the world won't follow suit. In form and function, the air car is a dual-mode vehicle. It has a petrol engine, and it can be driven on the road like a regular car. But with the push of just one button, it can be converted into an aircraft and take to the sky. To get its certificate in Slovakia, the air car demonstrated that it could safely fly between airports in Bratislava and Nitra at up to 118 miles per hour. KleinVision is delighted to have gained the certificate and says that it's now ready to introduce a commercial version of the air car to the market. The first time we saw the Inno truck was in 2012. News about this project has been few and far between in recent years, so the concept may have ground to a halt, but the ideas demonstrated by Inotruck could still shape the future. To describe Inotruck in basic terms, it's a rocket ship on wheels. Inside it are adaptive controls and displays, car-to-car -car communications systems, car-to-environment technology, and an array of other equipment designed to make intercity travel fast and efficient. It was first displayed at the Mobilitech International Trade Fair in Hanover, Germany in April 2012. At the time, reviewers marveled at the so-called smart grid that powered the Inno truck. It contained a battery pack, solar cells, regenerative brakes, 
and even a wind turbine to provide energy. It has a cockpit rather than a driving seat and contains adaptive controls which respond to the alertness of the driver, their driving skill, and hazards detected by the onboard camera. Perhaps the Inna truck was never intended to become a commercial product. It was a rolling laboratory where a multitude of future tech ideas could be tested. We're going back to the idea of flying cars now. People who grew up in the 1950s and 1960s expected that flying cars would be a reality by the year 2000. That didn't happen. But flying cars haven't been canceled as an idea. They've just been delayed until now. Car manufacturing giant Volvo recently acquired Terrafugia, a company that's been working on a flying car design for years. Their prototype is called the Transition a car that can drive on the road but has retractable wings for flying, and it's already been approved by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the USA. Not only that, it's sold a few models for just under $300,000 each. Their next model, the TFX, is envisioned as the breakthrough that will make the concept popular, a car that's also a helicopter and runs on electricity. With companies like Uber and Airbus also working on flying car designs, we can't be far away from seeing the idea become commonplace. As we said earlier, it'll come. It's just a question of who gets there first. Is the Ehang 184 a flying car or a drone? Well, why does it have to be one when it could be both? We saw this Autonomous Aerial Vehicle, or AAV for short, at the CES show of 2016. It looks a lot like a drone, but it's a drone with a difference. There's space inside it to fly one human passenger. Perhaps it would be helpful to think of it as a self-driving electronic helicopter? There's a personal story behind the development of the Ehang 184. The CEO of Ehang, Hua Jihu, is a pilot and started working on the idea after seeing two close personal friends lose their lives in plane crashes. He believed there had to be a safer way of conducting low-altitude flights without requiring people to have pilot's licenses, and he thinks his invention is the solution. Operating the device couldn't be any simpler. Passengers simply get in, turn on the power, pick their destination on the touchscreen, and then push a button to take off. The drone does everything else. He hoped to have commercial models available by the end of 2017. We're not sure why that didn't happen. This next vehicle, again, looks more like a plane than a car, but it's just as likely to be the future of taxi travel. The unusual looking vehicle is called the Cora, and it's been developed by a company called Kitty Hawk, an innovative transport company owned by Google founder Larry Page and partnered with Boeing. It's not just a flying taxi. It's a flying taxi that will eventually be capable of flying without a pilot. One day, the company hopes to be able to offer its two-seater flying taxis to passengers who will be able to summon the vehicle using a mobile phone app and then travel inside it in comfort to wherever they wish to go flying high above their hometowns and cities, and beating traffic in the process. There are a number of companies currently working on similar projects, with Uber believed to be close to trialing a service known as Uber Air. But this is the most advanced and promising version of a flying taxi that we've seen so far. We bet the fare won't be cheap when it eventually comes to the market, though. Want to see another flying car concept? Of course you do! Here's the Z-Aero, a flying car so compact that it would fit into a regular car parking space upon landing. The Z-Aero shares its name with the company that developed it, which is based close to the Googleplex in California. The concept was announced in 2013, and the device was imagined as a vertical takeoff and landing car. In other words, it doesn't need a runway or any clearance at all in order to take off and land. Despite the comparatively small size of the Z Aero, it has eight engines, although six of them are only used during takeoff or landing. There are also several propellers which are there to take over in the case of engine failure. Ilan Crew, a former NASA scientist, 
headed up the Z-Aero project and is also credited with coming up with the concept. The original concept never made it to the marketplace, but the dream isn't dead. In fact, Z-Aero recently rebranded itself as Whisk and began to work with Kitty Hawk. Skytran has officially been in development since 1990. That's a long time, but maybe they'll still get there in the end. At the risk of oversimplifying the concept, Skytran is a fast-moving personal monorail system. It was invented by Douglas Malawicki, working in partnership with Unimodal Incorporated. Various Skytran vehicle prototypes have been built, along with a test track. Those who believe in the potential of Skytran see it as a more viable alternative to maglev systems, which are expensive and prone to faults. The biggest boost to the Skytran project thus far came in 2010, when NASA got involved and agreed to help with testing and development. There are Skytran projects and tests happening right now in Malaysia, India, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. But more progress is being made in Dubai, where Skytran signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Dubai Roads and Transport Authority in 2019. That clears the way for Dubai to become the first place in the world to introduce Skytran's so-called suspended transit system. If all goes to plan, people in Dubai will be riding with Skytran as soon as 2024. Easy Mile isn't the technology of the future. It's the technology of the present. You might not have seen the Easy Mile EZ10 in your local neighborhood, but plenty of people watching this video will have seen one. Some of them may even have ridden in these revolutionary autonomous electronic buses. The Easy Mile EZ10 isn't a large vehicle. It only has room for six seated passengers, plus four more standing. But it can be adapted for people with wheelchairs and is envisioned as a solution in rural areas where populations are low but settlements are poorly served by existing bus or train networks. To date, the EZ-10 has been deployed in 30 cities and towns across 16 countries. That's not bad progress for a company and a concept that didn't exist until 2014, where it was founded as a joint venture between Robosoft Technology and Liger in France. The most recent place to get the Easy Mile service is the Colorado School of Mines campus in Golden, Colorado, USA, where students call it the Mines Rover. However, Tallinn in Estonia is still the only place in the world where Easy Mile units interact with regular traffic. Perhaps the most revolutionary transport technology currently under development is Hyperloop which is a pet project of Elon Musk's companies Tesla and SpaceX. The best way to describe Hyperloop is as a sort of vacuum train, a long tube in which a passenger carrying capsule moves at incredibly high speeds in a vacuum. That means it doesn't encounter any friction as it moves and can reach speeds of more than 750 miles per hour. Musk's big idea is to create a Hyperloop track between Los Angeles and San Francisco, capable of completing the 350-mile journey in a little over half an hour. That would be faster than any other method of transport currently available, including planes. Musk hasn't been precious about keeping his technology private. He's released it as an open-source idea, which has allowed several other companies, including Virgin, to begin looking into the possibility of creating their own Hyperloop services. Construction of the tracks and infrastructure won't be cheap, the Los Angeles to San Francisco track is expected to cost at least $6 billion, but it would be nothing short of a transport revolution. We've spent a lot of time in this video talking about earthbound transport solutions, but let's talk about leaving this little blue planet behind for a while and jetting off into space. If you want to do that as a regular member of the public rather than as an astronaut, your best bet appears to be Jeff Bezos' aerospace company, Blue Origin. Commercial spaceflight has been a long-term goal for plenty of tech companies for decades, but Blue Origin is closer to achieving it than anybody else, thanks to the numerous successful trials of its new Shepard rocket and capsule. 
You're most likely to have seen and heard of Blue Shepherd when, in an inspired piece of marketing, Bezos decided to take Star Trek legend William Shatner into space in October 2021. Shatner was 90 years old at the time of his spaceflight, making him the oldest person ever to leave Earth's atmosphere by some considerable distance. New Shepard is capable of taking off and landing autonomously and is reusable. It'll be joined by a second unit called New Glenn in 2024, after which the public may be able to start paying for tickets. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!